Hey, my name is uh, Michael Proct. I'm an environmental science major, and I'm from West Bagot, Virginia. I'm Colton Carpenter. I'm from uh, West Virginia. I'm a forestry major. I'm Mitchell Plain. I'm from West Virginia. I'm a forestry major. Grant Pierce, forestry major. I'm from West Virginia. And today we're going to talk about uh, an analysis of the history, impacts, and controls of microstegium uh, anemia. The stillgrass is part of the grass family. It's invasive to the United States. The common names are Japanese stillgrass, Chinese patent grass, Asian stillgrass, the annual jewel grass, and bamboo grass. In 1990, it was introduced in Tennessee, likely to its use as packing material from China. Like I said before, the Japanese stillgrass is invasive. To the United States. Uh, it's native to Japan, Korea, China, Malaysia, and India. It has been reported to be among 20 states in the eastern United States as far as west to Texas. Uh, it's primarily spread through waterways and by the roads. Uh, the impacts to uh, our ecosystem here. Um, it threatens the biodiversity of large uh, portions of the eastern and deciduous forest. Um, it spreads quickly and uh, chokes out our native plants. Um, it's susceptible areas can be fully colonized and overtaken in as little as three years. Um, it kind of does uh, provide uh, habitat for uh, other invasives like the cod ran and some others. Uh, it's commonly found on shaded hillsides. Uh, it will thrive in a variety of habitats, different soils, aspects, uh, shaded areas, non-shaded areas. Um, it produces anywhere from 100 to 1,000 seeds per flower. And here's an example I'll pass around. It's, uh, I don't know if you'll find any flowers or seeds on there. It has the ability to alter the soil. Um, the native plants have difficulty surviving, considering that the uh, Japanese still grass alters it for itself, but not for our native plants. Um, it has a higher pH, nitrification, and mineralization, and it has the ability to store nitrogen in the trees. For uh, control of Japanese still grass, you have multiple options. You can weed eat, mow. Uh, this can be time consuming, and it always re sprouts back, so it's just constant labor. Uh, also, very hard to control. You'd have to weed it in around plants, flowers, native species. It's very difficult. Uh, you can also pull it straight from the ground, but since this is spread over such a wide area, and normally when you come across a patch, it's not going to be no four foot patch. It's probably going to be 50 to 60 feet wide. Uh, biological controls. Um, Nothing eats stillgrass. There's no true uh, native species we have here that comes around and eats the grass. Uh, recently, there was a fungus, bipolaris, and it was found to cause some lesions and death of Japanese stillgrass, but there's only been one or two cases that were investigated. So there's no true biological control per se, but they'll probably definitely uh, investigate into that. Uh, chemical. Uh, this was my favorite way of getting rid of uh, Japanese still grass. Uh, glyphosate was good as long as you didn't, it, as long as you didn't have uh, a mix of uh, species in the area because glyphosate is non-selective; it will kill everything. And sometimes you might have to spray it two or three times to get it through the ground and through all the root system. Uh, the U.S. Forest Service uses a different chemical compound and it's got a 97% control and usually only needs to spray once per year. Okay, well this is the uh, concept now that we created for our species. So we have Japanese silkgrass here and it provides a habitat for the uh, invasive species that we commonly see is the cotton rat. And the cotton rat is actually detrimental to the um, northern bobolink. Uh, it'll it'll uh, prey on the eggs is a quail species. And uh, the bobwing will actually spread the seeds of the Japanese stiltgrass as it's 
towards and towards other food. And the Japanese silkgrass will in turn choke out food sources for the in, for the uh, northern bobwhite. And it actually has an effect on, um, I just chose black oak as an example, it, it can affect nearly any tree species. Um, and there's almost no uh, forest regeneration because the uh, seedlings don't, they're not able to get up above the layer of the Japanese stillgrass. And also they're not adapted to the soil conditions that the Japanese stillgrass creates. Um, and the black oak is also a food source for the northern bobwhite. <coughs> and so now we'll move on to the comparative analysis between uh, the microstegium and the uh, mimosa and visa. So microstegium is a grass and it's got a spreading growth form. Uh, it can grow up to one meter tall and it'll actually shade out the native plants like we mentioned before. Uh, the seeds are viable for five years and it's a nitrogen fixer and it will alter the soil conditions to meet its needs. Now mimosa and visa is similar except it's a shrub and it can grow up to two meters in height and it'll also shade out the native plants. Uh, this one's a little bit different because it can lie dormant for up to 50 years before uh, the seed can germinate. It's also a nitrogen fixer, and although it prefers uh, moist soils with high nutrients, it is somewhat adaptable to different conditions, but not nearly as much as the microstegium is. And so in conclusion, uh, microstegium, uh, or Japanese stillgrass, is an invasive species which has definitely had a significant impact on our native ecosystem in West Virginia. And it can grow just about any habitat, and it will outcompete just about anything else that's grown in it. Um, in, in combination with that, it will limit the food resources available to our wildlife, and that will also affect the regeneration of our forests. Here's our sources. Any questions?